I think generally over the past 11 months, the market has recovered quite a bit from what we saw in 2013. I think the RMB fundraising market has recovered uh, much more than the U.S. dollar market, but both markets are very hot. I would say uh, I anticipate that the next year will, the situation will be even better. My personal view is that this is good news for the industry because before this year when the announcement of CSRC, uh, the market the regulation of the market was unknown. Uh, and uh, there were problems in the market about uh, who's, who's the regulator, what uh, the fund managers need to do, whether the funds need to be registered uh, or regulated. But from this year on, with the clarity from the regulatory side, I think um, you know th that doubt is gone. My personal observation is that they don't really want to be the super regulator. Uh, they are trying to follow, uh, I would say, the U.S. model where a manager does not need to be licensed or pre-approved before they open up an investment management business. All they need to do is to register and disclose both to the regulators and to their investors how they are going to operate the funds. Many of them are really thinking about expanding in the same industry, buying more companies, consolidating the market, using third-party money but not necessarily their proprietary money. So uh, the private equity fund model seemed to be very attractive to serve that purpose. This is based on misunderstanding of how a private equity fund is operated because they are not aware that they need to disclose and resolve conflict interest issues because most of the market uh, LPs would ask them to disclose how they are going to manage because they don't want this new fund to be established to be the investment department of this company. It's taking much longer for them to raise funds and the LPs in the international market do not necessarily understand their business model and are not willing to commit. Uh, so I actually, to be honest with you, I have seen very few uh, RMB fund managers who the true traditional RMB fund managers going to the US dollar market and, and you know, were successful raising funds. The most important thing is that they understand the, how the U.S. dollar fund, the international fundraising market works. They hire the right service providers or the placement agents to help them or somebody who knows how to raise funds in the market to join their team as a senior management. And the other is really just to uh, communicate it in the correct way in terms of strategy as well. Uh, for example, uh, having a very good track record in the pre-IPO market is not necessarily attractive to international LPs because that's considered as high risk and uh, speculative in a way. They want to, what they want to see is whether the management team is able to turn around a company and add value. From about five years ago, we have really just uh, seen two sovereign wealth funds very active in the U.S. dollar fundraising market. Uh, but recently we have seen, I would say, at least three categories of uh, potential LPs. The insurance companies, as you know, uh, got their CIRC approval about two years ago uh, to invest in private equity funds and some other direct investments overseas. However, uh, because of the nature of these potential LPs are very conservative, I have not seen very active and real investments. Uh, so it's probably going to take a bit of time for them to get comfortable. The second category, the pension plan, even though the government is again seeking public comments on the possibility of opening up, opening up the gate for the pension plans to make foreign investments, uh, again, given the nature of uh, the pension plans, it's going to take a while. The third category actually is the, um, the 
the SOEs and private companies, the real potential LPs that I have seen over the past 12 to 18 months who are very active in the US dollar funds that we're working on.